the Sony a6400 and the Panasonic G95. The two cameras that are at the cutting edge of their respective brands for their individual price points. Really quickly though, the sky is red, gravity is a myth, and surely Pepsi is the better tasting soda. Now that we've got the dishonest part of the video out of the way, let's compare these two tiny titans of video. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad, and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. Yes, absolutely, that was a little bit of fun with the title. I guess I just get worn out by all the honest video review titles like Thank goodness, I can finally trust this one single video that says they're honest. Back to the A6400 and the Lumix G95. Now both of these cameras are very new and very exciting when you compare them to the cameras that they are replacing, both the A6300 and the Lumix G85 respectively. So let's figuratively smash these two together and get some comparisons going. If you spent any time around this channel, you'll know that I break these comparisons down into four major categories, because let's be frank. Frankness time. Each of these cameras has features and specs and buttons galore, and we could sit here all day talking about each and every feature, each and every spec. But instead of that, I want to share with you what I think are the most important aspects Especially if you are like me and you, you know, you want to be or are an online video content creator. Really quickly, let's check the recording capabilities of both cameras first. The Sony a6400 is a rangefinder style mirrorless camera that comes equipped with a 24 megapixel APS-C sensor. This compact camera can record in up to 4K 30 frames per second indefinitely so long as you are able to give it power and recording media first in the small Sony cameras that can do this, by the way. This is the a6400. In addition, it has, without a doubt, the absolute best continuous video autofocusing system I've ever come across. Now, I only keep, I know you hear me say that every time I talk about the a6400, but I only say that because darn it, it's true. The Lumix G95, on the other hand, is a more traditional DSLR style mirrorless camera that comes equipped with a 20 megapixel micro four third sensor. It can also record in up to 4K 30 frames per second indefinitely, wow. It's like the battle of the forever cameras today. While the G95's autofocus isn't as good, I will say that it has some class and price point leading stabilization that is out of this world good. You'll see more about it later, but it's fantastic. But enough of the specs, let's get into these two cameras. First up, video quality. Like I mentioned in specs, both cameras have very, very similar recording capabilities. I mean, 4K 30 frames per second is a pretty standard feature these days for a mid-range camera, but even now it's rare to find hybrid cameras like these that are not constrained by the dreaded 2959 recording cap. Ooh. <laughs> But even more exciting is both cameras actually have pretty good image quality chops. Neither can do their full recording capability with the full width of their sensors, which is pretty disappointing. The Sony has a 1.1-ish crop on top of their 4K 30 with no crop on their 24 frames per second, while the G95 has a total 2.4 compared to full frame crop on 4K images. So it has an additional 0.4 crop in addition to its two times micro four thirds crops. But really both cameras do a great job. Both have plenty of dynamic range. And if you wanna squeeze a little more range out of both, they each have access to their company's consumer level log profiles. S-Log on the A6400 and V-Log L on the Panasonic. Now I don't ever really use those for my recording as I'm not a big fan of grading footage. I just, I've got a quick, I've got a quick turnaround time and grading does not, grading does not equate in there. But I will say the quick V-Log L test I did on Monday, I'm incredibly impressed by just how easy it is to pop a LUT over the footage and have very usable outside footage where the standard picture profile is just unusable because the shadows are just absolutely destroyed. But image quality itself will barely get you halfway there. And by the way, this is the G95, this is the A6400, if you hadn't noticed. The more important and heavily weighted area is audio, because don't no one want to listen or watch to videos that have terrible audio. And again, here it's very similar. These are really the two only camera brands that I just, I just don't even worry about the audio. I mean, currently we're recording the audio through the G95 and a powered Rode VideoMic Pro Plus, it works perfectly well, sounds totally usable. Head to head though, I think I prefer recording audio internal to the Sony cameras for a couple of reasons. 
First up, the internal gain on the camera can be turned down lower on the a6400 as opposed to the G95. So you can have your microphones carry more of the audio weight, which as these consumer level cameras never really have the best internal preamps. You definitely want your audio device, whether that be an external recorder or a microphone or something else, you want that to do as much of the work as possible. But so that you can see all of this combined together really quickly, let's hop outside to show all of this put together into one concisely packaged vlogging test. See you out there. <laughs> Welcome to the vlogging test of the Lumix G95 and the Sony A6400. We're currently recording in 4K 24 frames per second. We've got their kit lenses on and we've got the ISO set to auto because why not? Now I do have the Sony zoomed in a little bit more. You can't actually get wider than this on the kit lens, but because the Lumix G95 has that additional crop on top of 4K, which is super lame, it's a new technology. You shouldn't be cropping in anymore. Yeah, but uh, because of that, we're just trying to make it match a little bit more. And uh, yeah, you can see the stabilization on the G95 is currently in dual IS mode where the stabilization on the A6400 is non-existent because it, it it doesn't, spoiler alert, we already, we might have already talked about it. It doesn't have stabilization. So the stabilization that it does have is what's built into the lens because there doesn't even have electronic image stabilization built into it, which is kind of sad. So you can see that the G95 should be perfectly well. I think the G95 is the better vlogging camera actually because of its flip out screen, it's better stabilization and it just, I don't know, I do wish it didn't have that crop in 4K, but yeah, this has been the vlogging test where you can see all of the aspects of image quality in a tight, concise vlogging package. See you back inside because I'm being eaten alive by mosquitoes. Yay, summer. See you there. We'll talk more about some of the differences that make the image quality easier, harder to get in a second. But yeah, both cameras, I mean, they just look great. Totally usable, it's just good stuff. I mean, online content, is never about the technical image quality because most platforms from Instagram to YouTube to Twitter, they all, when you upload a file to them, they all have compression algorithms that will maul your footage into blockable, terrible form anyway. So what matters most is how can you get good enough image quality as easy and consistent as possible? Or, Long story long, how easy are these two cameras to use? Spoiler alert, both are pretty easy to use so long as you understand their particular quirks in their menu system. Now, if you follow cameras pretty regularly, you know that I added that little caveat here for the uh, the Sony menus. But as so I've been using Sony cameras for almost two years now. The menus don't bother me that much, but I know there's a lot of you out there that and they can be a, a tad frustrating if I'm being totally objectively honest here. Uh, and I do like how much easier the Panasonic menus are to sort through, and plus it has a fully articulating touchscreen that allows you to tap to change settings. Now, Honestly, I don't ever really use the touchscreen to change the settings if I'm behind the camera. I do all of that when I'm in front of the camera, which is insanely useful. We'll talk more about that here in a second. It's just insanely useful to do that in front. Meh. When I'm behind the camera, I generally just use the actual physical dials, but it's nice to have the ability to tap if I need it. When it comes to the physical construction of the cameras, again, it's gonna come down to your personal preference. Do you prefer the rangefinder style of camera or the DSLR style of camera? I mean, that's a totally a personal choice. Now, I definitely like how the G95 feels way more than I like the A6400. I mean, the G95 just feels like a high quality camera. And like I mentioned on Monday, it feels more like a mini G, we all know how much I love my GH5, and it feels like a mini GH5. And another unique feature for the price point, yes, the side loading SD card slot is so much more useful than a bottom loading one. Even though the Sony's body is perfectly easy to use, I do absolutely prefer the customization and just the overall ease of setting up that the Panasonic G95 presents. Like I, it's a good camera body. However, the story of an easy to use camera isn't told by how easy it is to set up, it's how easy it is to get usable footage after you hit record. And this is a little thing I've dubbed fiddliness. I know you all said it. I was waiting for you to say it internally. Honestly, neither of these cameras scores perfectly in this category. They both stumble in different ways. The Sony A6400 has absolutely the best autofocus I've ever used. We're using it right now, and it's crazy how I never ever have to worry about whether or not I'm going to be in focus when I use it, because seriously, with the flip up monitor, you can continue to use the Sony face tracking autofocus, so all you need to do is see that the white box is around your face, which it is right now, and you are good. There's no wobbles, no anything. It is just autofocus that just darn it, it works. 
But it's not perfect, there is no in-body image stabilization, or heck, even electronic image stabilization, so your biggest problem in getting usable footage out of the Sony isn't gonna be about focusing, or monitoring framing, or audio, because you can do all that from in front of the camera. It's gonna be using the camera pretty much locked off, like on a tripod or something at all times, because otherwise, if you're a caffeine addict like me, you'll never get rid of the Sony shaky footage. I mean, that just, it stinks. Even using a lens with stabilization built into it, it's just not gonna take it all out. The Lumix G95, though, has the opposite problem. It has fantastic in-body image stabilization that can combine with Panasonic lenses to create dual IS, which darn it is, I mean, it's just about one of the most stable video platforms out there today. You can easily keep out unnecessary shake, no matter how much Diet Coke is coursing through your veins. Mine has a lot coursing through it right now. Plus with the IS lock setting, you'll never have a problem getting tripod levels of stabilized footage, even at long zoom ranges, straight up handheld. Like the shot that you're seeing now is just me holding the camera like this and it works perfectly. But again, it's not perfect. The continuous video autofocus, in my opinion, continues to be unusable. Now there are plenty of ways to work around this via you know, the app support that we're using right now personally, or you can touch to focus from the screen. But if you really wanna let the camera decide where to focus, this isn't the camera for you. Panasonic cameras in general are not the cameras for you. But you've been persuaded by the everyday dad to buy one of these cameras like so many before you have. I knew I wasn't gonna be able to say that with a straight face as we, as we finish that off. What does the ecosystem slash upgrade path look like? Well, for the Micro Four Thirds Lumix G95, the ecosystem and upgrade path are bright. You've got access to a huge line of lenses, battery grips, and other accessories that will fully round out any video system. Plus, you can take those lenses and move towards the ultimate video hybrid camera released right now, the GH5 or GH5S, if you're into that sort of thing, afterwards. If you really want that 10-bit and 4K 60 goodness. Man, I like the GH5. The Sony, on the other hand, is kind of a mixed bag. The APS-C lenses for the E-mount are pretty anemic, but you do get a line of prime lenses from Sigma that are absolutely amazing. In fact, we've been using the 30 millimeter 1.4 for this entire video. I mean, that line of lenses is great. But if you want actual Sony lenses or a zoom lens, I mean, there just aren't that many. I mean, you could use the full frame lenses and that's a totally viable option because that then opens up a whole other upgrade path to the bigger Sony cameras. But in my opinion, I choose APS-C and Micro Four Thirds for smaller systems and using huge full frame lenses, I mean, that just doesn't work for me. I've tried it so many times and I just can't get into it. Plus, this is the pinnacle of the Sony hybrid APS-C cameras, so there really isn't any room for you to grow here unless you go straight up to the FS5, FS7 line of cameras. But at the end of the day, so what, right? So which of these cameras works best for a content creation camera? Honestly, I'd probably give overall usability for more situations like studio talking head, B-roll, vlogging, handheld stuff. I'd give all of that to the G95. It's got some fantastic features that are very impressive, but the big problem is you could get the G85, the version before it, for about half the cost and almost all of the functionality. So I'd absolutely recommend that over the 95 unless you really need that Vlog L. Now if you are looking for a single camera to make videos though, it's gonna come down to use. And I think the a6400 is the best camera released so far this year. It's got great colors, great autofocus, it's got a great monitor that you can use. So uh, that footage just died. I just wanted to wrap this video up by saying I think the a6400 for a single use just like using locked off shots for a video is the best camera released right now, and I would absolutely recommend it over the G85. If you want to be more out and about, you need better stabilization, then the G95 is a pretty good option. Thanks for watching.